There's a, a memory of being young in our, all of our bodies that we just have to tell, reset. We take a pill mm -hmm. and we become like Deadpool and we can regrow things. We don't know how many times you can press the reset button and restore the hard drive. It could be once, we've done that. Maybe it's a hundred times. Oh my gosh. But it gets even crazier when we can actually change the genome. We don't just read it, we write it. There are drugs on the market, most people may not realize. We are changing people's genetic diseases. We're curing genetic diseases. Yes. Yes. We are living in the future, man. This is a revolutionary conversation for me. Welcome back to Max Out, everybody. The man to my right, I chased down today because today's show is for me, everybody, and you guys get to listen in because we're gonna talk about anti-aging. We're gonna talk about living longer. We're gonna talk about living better. And the man to my right is the foremost expert, I think, on the spinning earth today in this area. He's a Harvard professor. He's one of Time Magazine's most influential people. He's been knighted in his home country of Australia. <laughs> And he's kind of an unbelievable combination of part scientist, part businessman, and an unbelievable best-selling author, international best-selling author of this book, Lifespan, everybody, that I want you to get, why we age and why we don't have to. And that's what we're going to talk about today is you not having to age and how we can help you with that. So Dr. Sinclair, David, thank you for Call being here. Call me David. Thanks, Ed, for All having right. me here. Going forward, it will be David. So Please. Thank you. Combined IQ, very high today, guys, and he's holding up 85% of it, so. <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk first off about, because this is heavy note-taking probably for the audience today. I want to talk first off about aging and how we measure it, because you know, I'm not sure you know, if we're going to not age or we're going to reverse our age, there has right. to be a calibration method. And I'm wondering when you do that, is that, is that telomeres, because I know you talk about the Horvath clock also in your book, right. how do you measure aging? Well, we, we used to just look at people and you know, that person looks kind of old, that person doesn't. Right. Then we had telomeres, which was all the rage in the 1990s. Actually, telomeres aren't the whole rage anymore. There's a new way of measuring aging okay. and it's this Horvath clock you mentioned. Okay. So the Horvath clock has revolutionized our ability to design ways to slow down and in, in my lab accelerate aging. We can measure it. I could take your blood today. Maybe I should. Uh, hey, hey, take some back to my lab and I could measure your actual biological age. So forget about candles, they're irrelevant. I could measure this Horvath clock and I could tell you not just how old you are biologically, but how long you're gonna live and when you're gonna die. When you're gonna die. Yeah, very accurately. It's, it's scary, but this clock actually tells us, I think, about what the process of aging is. Why do we age in the first place? Hmm. So it's not, telomeres is sort of old school now? Is that what you're saying? Well, you know, I, I try not to just be black and white about this, but telomeres is certainly not the whole story of aging anymore. So in general, then we're going to get very specific. Why do we age? How do we age? Well, the, so this is what's in my book, which is mm. I, I've kept bottled up an idea about aging and I, we studied it for 10 years and kept it secret. Okay. And it all just flowed out onto the page in the book. Mm. And we have all this research to back it up. What I'm proposing is that there are lots of different causes of aging. Telomere loss is another, is, is a main one. There's stem cell loss, senescent cells, so zombie cells that accumulate, all these things. We, we actually, as a field, I'm a scientist, mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, we declared victory over aging about 10 years ago. We said, there are eight causes of aging. Mm. Let's put them in a pie chart. We're done, we know what causes aging. Mm. And I'm there thinking, that's great, but what causes those things? Right. Is there a unified theory of aging? Okay. And that's what I've got in the book. It's called the information theory of aging. And it can explain, I think, why all of those things happen. So instead of building nine dams or eight dams on eight tributaries, we may be able to go all the way up and stop the main driver of what causes us to get old. Mm. So I want to go through a, a couple of the things. By the way, the book, by the way, now has an audio version that's been updated as well. And I really recommend you all, if you have the book, is go get a look at the new audio book and listen to that because there's a whole new thing in the book there that he's added as well. But I want to go through some of the basic things you've covered because some of these things I do and I'm wondering if they're still effective and I'm wondering if I shouldn't be doing them anymore. But one of the things I was prescribed, I have um, fed a touch of arthrosclerosis in my life. And one of the things my cardiologist was concerned about was inflammation in my body. And so I was prescribed metformin yeah. um, in an effort to reduce inflammation in my body. And I'm wondering all of your thoughts on metformin because it's at the kind of the it's part of the book, and it's also part of a lot of the conversation about 
anti-aging uh, glucose regulation and those kind of things. Yeah, so the, the thing with metformin that everyone needs to know, and will know if, if they get the book, is that there are three main ways to slow down aging, three genetic pathways. I work on one pathway called the sirtuins, mm -hmm. which uh, we can talk about later, but yeah. they're, they're a crux of defending against aging. There are two others. One responds to how much protein you eat, and the third one responds to how much energy, chemical energy is in your body. That's metformin. Okay. So metformin will trick your body into thinking there's not enough energy, and it'll respond and actually make your body, mm -hmm. we think, fight against aging, right. and, and particularly type 2 diabetes. So metformin is a drug that came out from the French lilac. It's originally a, uh, a natural molecule, but yeah. it was tweaked a bit, so it's now a drug. You need a prescription. But, but I'm shocked. Are you still taking metformin? I'm not. Ah, well, all right. We need to talk. Okay. But uh, I'm not an MD. But Why should I, we talk? Should I be still taking it? I don't re make any recommendations. In general. But, uh, but what I do is I take it. You do? Uh, yeah, I don't leave home without it. Can I tell you why I stopped? And you can correct me. Sure. Okay. I stopped because I started to read at least anecdotal evidence because I do lift weights. Yep. I'm an athlete. I'd like to think of myself as an athlete, even though I'm pushing 50 years old, um, that it may have some negative implications on athletic performance you know, and or recovery. All right. So now we're really jumping in fast. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right. So I I've know, been waiting I for today this. for a long time. Sorry. Yeah. So metformin... <laughs> What it does is it, okay. it inhibits your mitochondria, it okay. makes your body think you don't have enough energy, okay. and your body will respond accordingly, and you become what's called insulin sensitive. You'll have low glucose levels in your body, and it'll prevent type 2 diabetes. Right. What we also know from studies of 10,000, up to 100,000 people in some studies, people who take metformin seem to be protected, not just against diabetes, but against heart disease, cancer, frailty and Alzheimer's, that's all good. That's what you find in a, an anti-aging or longevity pill. Okay. Metformin's great because it's, as far as we know, pretty safe. It's been taken by probably great. 100 million people around the world. It's on the list of the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines for humanity. Hmm. So it's, it's, it's pretty good. You're not, you're not gonna die from it. Hmm. It's very rare. Consult a doctor as you did. Okay. But I was surprised that your doctor put you on metformin even though you didn't have diabetes, that's very rare. The reason was, and um, I should, I, I, I won't say her name, but I think she's sort of at the cutting edge of this, and she really does believe that one of the greatest risks to my health or anybody's health is developing type two diabetes. Great, so your doctor knows a lot more than most doctors? Correct, most cardiologists, it's Lipitor and Crestor yeah. and uh, you know, don't eat uh, a steak. Exactly, and, right? and, and their view, and I train a lot of doctors mm -hmm. and uh, work with them, but their view is, unless you pass the threshold of a disease, Right. We, are, we won't treat it. Mm -hmm. But metformin will prevent diabetes as well and get your glucose levels. And actually the best predictor of longevity right now, besides this clock, is your blood glucose levels. You want to keep them down. Okay. You do not want to go up. And I was going up and up and up. So I started taking metformin a mm. couple of years ago. You do. And my, ostensibly my biological age, based on different tests, mm -hmm. not the clock, but the other tests, went from 58 down to 31.4. It's incredible. And you look 31.4 and I look 58. So I, wanna, I need to get back on metformin. No, no. <laughs> I, 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 was, I, was I was joking with Ed that I needed to wear this padded suit so that I, I yeah. don't look such a wimp. Oh, well, thank you. Look but great. No, you, you're looking great. Thank you. But let's get back to the muscles. So this is called hypertrophy, mm -hmm. muscular hypertrophy, mm -hmm. which is great. Mm -hmm. I would love to look like you, mm -hmm. and I just don't have the time to do it. But but it's it's great. Plus, you you will be much stronger when you're older, which is key to okay. to living longer. Bone density, things of that sort. All of right? that's great. Right. And actually, one of the the things we like to say in my field is. The best way to live a long life is to hang on to the handrail, which basically means don't slip and break your, your femur yeah. or you're done for, like my grandmother. Right. But let's get into something really important. A lot of people aren't sure about metformin because it, there were two studies just this year that showed that it slows muscle right. hypertrophy. Right. But here's the good news. Okay. And I, I know the world's experts in this, and I've talked to the authors of the paper. So here's the scoop. All right. First time. It's awesome. All right. You're getting this the first time. <laughs> this is awesome. What they found, and this is also work that's not yet out, so let me give, give you the scoop. Okay. The patients that got metformin and those that didn't, they all got bigger muscles and they all got stronger. Okay. One group got slightly bigger muscles, that was the group on placebo, and those on metformin didn't get so big. But when, when, they, when they did the strength, strength test, they were equal. Wow. So they're all strong. Wow. They may not look as good. Okay. So I think it's a vanity versus longevity decision. Okay. But I think there's a way around this as well. Now we're on the cutting edge, so we don't know for sure, but what I do is when I work out, I stop taking metformin. 
let my body recover for a couple of days, okay. and then I go back on it. Ah. And you know, Peter Atia, the, the yes. doc, good doctor yeah. who, who studies this, we both agree that you don't want to be taking the same medicine every day necessarily, just as you don't want to work out every day, you need to give your body a rest. Okay. So, you know, we cycle So in things. between workouts, you might, if someone works out, let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you might suggest that the workout days specifically they not take? Something like metformin on those days? Well, that's they what I do. Okay. That, that's based on everything we know in the world right now. Okay. And then, by the way, thank you for that. You guys, first off, I'm so grateful that you exist. Because, no, I, I, we were talking about this off camera too, that this whole field that you're in is moving so quickly and you're at the cutting edge of it. And I think every person listening to this, in regards to they want to live healthier, they also want to live longer, but as they live longer, they want to be able to, they want to, I've already looked at it differently. I look different. I love my dad, but I look different at 48 than my dad did at 48. You know what I'm saying? I think athletically, physically, sure. my strength level. And I think what's possible with somebody like you, like right now, if someone did all the things that are in your book, if they put the right formula together, not only do you think they can not be aging, but what's the window of time they might be able to reverse their aging by? I know that's by person by person, but in general, how many years can someone reel off their life or add to their life rather? Well, right. Well, so, so someone like me doesn't typically exist because they're scared of what my colleagues, our colleagues will say. And it's pretty rough for a scientist to be out there talking about things that are really on the cutting edge and projecting into the And future. to some extent speculative still, correct? Right. 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 Based on evidence, but speculative. But, but how selfish is it for me and my family right. to reap the benefits? We're all scientists in my family. Hmm. We're on similar programs. How selfish is that for me to keep that bottled up? Wonderful. I want to tell the world what I'm learning. It's wonderful. And we're in a world where now everybody can learn as fast as I'm learning and what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, I feel an obligation to do that. But what about uh, talking about the, the metformin, mm -hmm. the story? Couple, two and a half years it says it takes off or, or adds well, to. So if you're- it can. Right. Yeah. Theoretically, if you're 50, you're now 47 and a half if you're on a, the normal yeah. dose of metformin is what they're saying. But we don't really know. We don't, we don't know. know what it's gonna do to, uh, to diminish your ability to get type two diabetes, what that could do, heart disease, all the inflammation in your body because of yeah. these glucose spikes, correct? Yes. Well, so here's the most important take home message is that only 20% of your longevity and how you'll feel when you're 70 and 80 and 90 mm. is genetic. Okay. The rest is in your hands. Wow. Isn't that, ex that's liberating. Yes. I mean, you can sit on the couch, you can eat potato chips, you can mm. uh, not exercise, you can eat whatever you want, mm. but you're minimizing your, your potential. Right. And what we all have in our bodies, what we co-discovered in my lab is that there are genes that control how long we live. We work on these pathways mm. and what we've discovered is they don't just exist, they respond to how we live. Hmm. And what we want to do is trick our bodies into thinking there's adversity, hmm. biological stress, not emotional stress, but biological stress. Okay. So now we understand why does exercise make us healthier and live longer? Why does being hungry make us live longer? Why do all these things, eating good foods, hmm. it's because they're turning on these body defenses, these longevity genes that we work on. Hmm. And that's the revelation. They're in all of us, but we, they become complacent unless we trick our bodies into getting this feeling of, of uh, adversity. Adversity. So it's, we call this hormesis. Okay. Hormesis is what doesn't kill you makes you live longer. And that's the reason you should be running and getting out of breath. That's the reason you should be eating plants that have been stressed themselves. You get the benefits of those molecules that they make for their own benefit. Okay. We call that xenohormesis. Terrible, terrible word, but anyway, it, it, it's good to eat stressed plants. Like uh, that's why red, red wine's good for you, we believe. It's full of those molecules. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah, so resveratrol, you'll remember. We, yes, I, where I are you? So let's go there. You're famous for that. Oh, and yeah. um, I got the feeling lately, yeah. maybe you're not as married to it as you once were, or am I incorrect about that? And then for those of you that are taking resveratrol, yeah. is it also not true that if you're not doing something that can make it bind to something, so that it can be absorbed by your body. Do you mind talking about that for a second? Because okay. people just kind of willy-nilly take these pills, I think right. to some extent, and think they're doing something. So A, do you still feel as strong about it as you did at one time? Mm -hmm. And B, could you tell us how to properly ingest it? Sure. Thank you. All right, so <laughs> I, I also dodged the question, not intentionally, of uh, how far can we slow and reverse aging? You did, I'm sorry, you're my, right. My, I let you dodge that, Well, I I'm so fascinated. I, I, I worry, because people will say, oh, how can you say that? Right. Right, so this is my best guess, is that you can alter your lifespan at least a decade by how you live your life, maybe wow. more. Wow. And my father is, is an example of someone who took life by the horns, changed his life. 
He's super fit. He's now 80. He's living life like he was 30 still. He's got no diseases. Is that right? He just put his name on a wait list for a, his dream car. I'm thinking, a wait list? You're optimistic. <laughs> that is awesome. He started a new career. <laughs> really, this is the future for all of us if we look after our bodies and do what we think is the right thing. Love it. Right. Uh, so, so that I think that 10 years is... is 10 years least, is, a, is at least, at, based on current science, something right. you could be doing. Right. And actually, every four years longer we live, mm. we gain another year just because the trajectory of the science, how it's going. And we're gonna talk about CRISPR a little bit later, where right. we might be able to interrupt heart disease and some other things here going forward that'll just, that'll extend life. To, my God, it could be three decades. But, but go ahead, go on uh, resveratrol if you would. So resveratrol is this molecule in red wine that right. is thought to protect the French from high fat foods. Yeah. And we discovered that it activates an enzyme in the body called SIRT1, okay. one of these SIRT2 and protective enzymes that's activated by hunger and exercise. Okay. So resveratrol we discovered as the first molecule that could mimic a caloric really, calorically restricted diet mm -hmm. and exercise. Mm -hmm. This wasn't an excuse to just sit on the couch and eat pop a pill because we actually found that if you take, if mice took resveratrol and exercised and ate a healthy diet, they lived the longest. Okay. So it's a combination, but you want to keep these enzymes active because as we get older, these defensive enzymes like SIRT1, they go down in their activity. Okay. So there are two ways to keep SIRT1 super active. Okay. Besides living the healthy lifestyle that many of us know about and is in my book, page 302, 303. <laughs> Unbelievable. Jump, jump to the, because some people, they, right. want it, they just right. want the facts. Right, just right. want the list. Right. Um, but resveratrol is a remarkable molecule because plants make it to survive. Because plants have SIRT2 and longevity enzymes as well. Okay. But when we ingest that, we get the benefits. Okay. Right? So you said I was not as hot on that. Yeah. What happened was. Yeah. Okay, I was right. What happened was, <laughs> all of us who have been blessed to be successful in what mm -hmm. we do mm -hmm. have gone through really hard times, mm -hmm. and I had my moment, the worst time of my life, in 2010. So I'd spent. The what last was that? Do you mind saying what it was? Yeah, sure. So I, I had discovered resveratrol activates anti-aging pathways. We'd shown that it extended lifespan and everything from a yeast cell to a worm to a fly to a mouse, protected them against a, a Western diet, and even extended their lifespan when we gave it to them every other day. Okay. That was great. We developed drugs that were showing efficacy, working in humans to treat the, a d disease called psoriasis, yes. which is inflammation on the skin. Mm -hmm. Everything was looking like we were going to be the first people to make a drug that treats aging on the market. Okay. And then a couple of companies for reasons that we can only speculate, came out with their science and said, it's all wrong. Everything David said is wrong. I remember that. It blew yep. up. Yeah, I remember that. It, it trashed the trials, mm. and I was the pariah of the scientific world. Mm. And uh, it was tough. I spent sure. a week in bed. I couldn't get out of bed. It was real depression. Mm. And I was really angry with the world, I'll admit, because here I am trying to do my best. Right. I'm putting my life aside. I'm putting my family aside to help the world, like you do. Yes. Well, maybe not your family, but you know, we want to I help the exactly world. I know exactly what you mean. And, it was, and then everyone said, ha ha, you're wrong, screw you. And it was tough. Mm. But you know, you, yeah. my passion is to leave the world a better place. Yeah, this is your calling. Obviously. So I couldn't stay in bed. Awesome. You know, that, that to me is worse than death, is just sitting there. Hope everybody just heard that. Right? Yeah, it really is. You gotta have, my mission is to, to change the world in this mm. way. So got out of bed mm. and spent the next three years testing whether what these companies were saying, mm. and I'll say who they were, Pfizer and Amgen, both okay. didn't, didn't agree with us. But what it did, and the, the silver lining was, it forced us to do even better science and go back and test our hypothesis very, very rigorously. Mm. And we put out a paper uh, in the journal Science, which is the best in the US, best in the world probably, mm. showing that we were right, that mm. resveratrol really was activating this enzyme and wasn't what the naysayers were saying. Mm. But you know what? In the media, there were crickets. No one cares no about one, the comeback guy. Right, that's right. They just right. cared about the Never. fall. Right. Uh, so what we've done over the last, what is it now, seven years, is we've been testing this even more rigorously. Okay. I'll tell you what we've done. Okay. We've created a mouse. We can genetically create mice with okay. very specific changes. Okay. We changed the mouse by changing one amino acid, one part of this protein. Um, so you don't mind if I get a little bit technical here? Do it. All right. Please. So the en enzymes are basically machines that change other proteins. Okay. And so at one, it, it's the traffic cop. It tells the body to, to fight diseases, fight aging. 
Okay. But to do that, it has to move. It has to change things. Okay. And what it does is it, it has this active en enzyme activity in the middle of, that's its chest. But this arm is the activator. This is the gas, uh, sorry, the, the accelerator pedal. Okay. So the accelerator pedal is pushed by resveratrol. Resveratrol will come in. I get stick it. Stick here. Yep. Push the accelerator. And now the SIRT1 enzyme is fighting against disease. Okay. Now we figured out that you can block this step by changing mm. one little thing. Give it tennis elbow. It can't bend the elbow. Now resveratrol cannot work anymore. Got it. So we made a mouse that was unable to bend this arm mm. and activate. So the accelerator pedal, we took it out of the system. Mm. The, mile, the mouse is otherwise normal. Mm. It doesn't have the accelerator pedal though. Mm. So if, if we're wrong and we give resveratrol to these mice, they won't live longer on a high fat diet, Western diet. If we're right, resveratrol won't work at all. Okay. And we got the second result, 100%. Mm. And awesome. that's as close to proof that we were right in the first awesome. place. So what I'm hoping is that'll reinvigorate the field and we'll get those drugs back into those clinical trials. Okay. But I haven't been sitting on, uh, on my hands. I've been sure. working on other molecules that seem to have a lot of promise okay. and maybe even better than the original discovery. Such as? Well, we call them NAD boosters yes. or NADs. Some people call yep. them NADs. So there are two ways to activate these, these protective enzymes. One is the accelerator pedal. Yep. The other is the gas okay. that comes in through here. And if, without either of those, you don't have hyperactive system. Okay. And as we get older, we lose this NAD. Yeah. So it's estimated that by the time you're my age, 50, and you're getting close, right, right you have about half the levels you did of NAD when you, when you were young, when okay. you're 20. Okay. So of course your defenses against aging are gonna be about half the levels that they were. Mm -hmm. So there are some ways to, to keep your NAD levels relatively high. Okay. One is to exercise, lose your breath, work out. Lose your breath, you, yeah. you said that a couple times. Yeah. So you wanna not, lose your breath. So not walking cardio, lose your breath cardio. Yeah, that's okay. the best way, at okay. least based on the animal studies we've done and some okay. human studies. Okay. And then the second is uh, you want to be hungry at okay. least part of the day, and that'll raise the levels of... What uh, do you mean by that? Like, so, so do you believe in intermittent fasting, or do you... I do. You do? I do. We used to restrict calories the whole day yeah. in these, what we call calorie restriction, mm -hmm. and that was the paradigm for about okay. 70 years, actually. Okay. And then just in the last 10 years, we've realized, hey, you don't need to always be hungry. Okay. You can actually eat a decent meal or two, okay. but don't eat three meals a day. Don't always snack okay. because being hungry is what turns on these protective enzymes. Mm. And so I've now shifted my life to uh, eating small meals. I've, I now, what I do is I skip breakfast as best I can, Yeah. eat a very late lunch or even forget to eat lunch and then eat a normal dinner. This is more and more. So that Dr. Ian Smith that I told you was on my show, his book was about intermittent fasting, but that particular the aging benefit was never discussed. Yeah. We, we discussed the health benefit, although I'm sure Ian's aware of it. It's not something that we discussed. Just to put a loop on resveratrol, what about the way you take it? Is it important? Yeah. I was reading that you thought something about taking it with either like a yogurt or a milk or something it can bind to, exactly. and why does that matter? Well, so the, there are clinical trials over the last 10 years based okay. on our research, and some have failed and some have succeeded. Okay. And the main reason that they failed, in my view, is that Doctors who don't understand resveratrol have just given the pill with water. And yes. resveratrol is the equivalent of brick dust. It's like eating sand, right? We're here on the beach. Okay. If you eat sand, you're not gonna absorb it. Okay. But if you crush up the sand and mix it with things, you might absorb a little bit. All right. That's what we do with resveratrol. And what I do personally is I have this amazing yogurt that I make myself okay. and I mix it with that and it dissolves beautifully okay. and I have a couple of spoons of that. So if, I take, if I'm taking a pill, could I take it with a yogurt? Is that what you're suggesting? That would so? work in your stomach. Okay. Okay. I, I have powder in my basement, so I just spoon it in. Okay. I take about half a gram to a gram. Okay, awesome. Um, but yeah, you gotta do that. And so okay. the recent studies that have actually included resveratrol with a meal mm -hmm. have succeeded in lowering blood sugar. Got it. And there are actually now, I was just at a meeting in Washington DC where they have beautiful clinical data showing that it works like metformin to reduce blood sugar as so well. So this blood sugar concept, because that's my cardiologist is a big thing too, this is just gonna be huge throughout everything that we're learning about the body and keeping it stable and not aging and also not doing, not even turning on certain, can, it, can inflammation of the body speed up turning on a genetic code that's already in there? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. that's a really good, good point. The inflammation is, is a problem because if you have inflammation, it'll also shut down these defenses against aging okay. and that'll lead to more inflammation and okay. just accelerate aging. Okay. You know, we know that we get to about 40 and we're still pretty good. We get to 50 and we're starting to feel a little different, looking different. That's absolutely true. And then you fall off a cliff. Yes. That's this positive feedback of inflammation, 
shutting down longevity genes yep. and vice versa. Okay. And it just, it, once it, we're on that, I have found dead. that those things, and we're gonna talk about them later, like my vision, other signs of aging, really started to accelerate in my mid to late 40s, approaching 50. Right. I mean, a massive different. So I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but, but it's certainly something I've seen evidentiary, like my own experience as a human. Yeah. I feel myself aging now at this point. Yeah, so there are things you can do to slow that down right. and things that we're doing that slow and reverse aspects and then technology that can reverse all aspects. Okay, let's keep talking about that. By the way, um, everybody, this is one of these shows my audience loves this, just so you know. So there, many of them are driving right now. They're gonna go back. This is a watch it again or listen to it again and you're taking all these notes. So I wanna go through a couple other specific things. We've talked about resveratrol. We've talked about metformin. Um, there's sort of this cocktail sort of that you suggest to some extent. I wanna talk about growth hormone hmm. for a second. What are your feelings about growth hormone, both um, taking an exogenous version or doing things that may, uh, if, if it even works, of growing your own and why is growth hormone so important or not important? Yeah, uh, so in my field of, of aging research, it's, it's debated tremendously. Mm -hmm. And most of the, the debate comes from studies of, of animals. Mm -hmm. And what we find is that animals that have low levels of growth hormone live longer. So there's this- Low levels live longer. Right. Okay. But there's something that my colleagues don't appreciate. And that is a lifelong treatment of or lifelong existence with low growth hormone, what you end up with is dwarfism. So small okay. animals, okay. due to a lack wow. of development, live long. Oh, wow. Okay. It's also, by the way, known that the smaller you are, you tend to live longer. Mm -hmm. that, and we know that from pet dogs. Mm -hmm. If you've ever had a, sure. a, a large dog, you know the problem. So the reason is that during development, uh, we're actually slowing down the clock. And you actually, the clock is changing when you're young as yeah. well. Okay. But what, what I believe anyway, is having read thousands of papers on this topic, is that growth hormone isn't bad, but it won't make you live longer. Okay. Because what, what it's doing is some benefits. It's gonna okay. improve your body's uh, metabolism, mm -hmm. it's gonna help you grow muscle. But what it's not doing is turning on the longevity genes, which is what you need to do, okay. the kind of things that I'm doing to get those active as well. Okay. So what's exciting to me is maybe you could take growth hormone, but then trick the body into thinking that it's lacking growth hormone and that you're exercising tremendously. How would you do that? Trick it? Yeah. Well, what I do it, uh, is the, the combination of the metformin yes. uh, with the resveratrol and there's the N NAD booster, yeah. okay. which I take. Those are the three main components. Yeah. By the way, I don't recommend anybody do anything. I'm right. a PhD, not a doctor, right. but I, I feel no obligation to say what I do. And, the, and by the way, one other thing, there's all these companies out there suggesting that your name's on them but you're not involved with any particular uh, company that's NAD that they could purchase right now, Zero. are you? Zero. No, no, I'm glad you mentioned that, yeah. Ed, because if you look on the internet, you might think that I have 10 companies. You would. There's even a Sinclair lab. Somebody started a company with my name on there. My goodness. So I, I don't do that, and there's a very good reason for that. Okay. It's because I need to be able to give you my unbiased scientific opinion. Okay. And if I, if I have some favorites, why would you trust what I'm saying? Good point. Okay, so we've got the growth hormone answer, okay. Uh, my age, uh, you find a dude looking like me, that dude may have had an interest in hormone replacement. And I'm wondering your thoughts on that. So I've had people say to me, as your hormones in your body diminish, you are aging. And so for that reason, in the anti-aging movement, particularly testosterone therapy for both men and women now is a pretty highly mm -hmm. prescribed and recommended protocol as their own levels drop. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense to me. Okay. Um, there are two points. One is that maintain what you've lost. Okay. I think it makes perfect sense. Okay. Um, testosterone and growth, growth hormone. Okay. But don't think that they're gonna make you live longer. That's okay. not the solution. Okay. You, I think you need to combine that with these other things that will put your body in a defensive state. Okay. Because testosterone and growth hormone, they're gonna do the opposite. They're gonna put your body in the growth reproduction state, okay. which is great when you're young, but it's not gonna extend your lifespan. Do you believe, uh, is it a wise tale that either testosterone or the growth hormone may grow uh, organs in your body, or do we not know? In other words, the heart might expand in in the, to a dangerous extent. And secondly, I'm, I just love asking you this stuff, sorry. Okay. And secondly, uh, that potentially if you were to develop cancer or a tumor that it could accelerate the speed of which the disease manifests itself in your body. Do, you, do we know? Do we have an idea? Do you have an opinion about it? Yeah. Uh, well, 
So we, it's debated. So there okay. is the, the, the truth is we don't actually know. Okay. But uh, I've read all the literature, and, okay. and my personal take on the science is that it's not a risk okay. to develop tumors. But if you have a tumor, then I think then, then you get serious with your doctor, okay. and I think you, you stop this stuff. Okay. But everything I've seen is that things that you and I do, they're not going to make things worse. Mm. But, it, but if something's detected, then we're in new territory. Mm. So for instance, NAD boosters, I take those, mm -hmm. if you give those to mice, they have new blood vessels, it's like a super drug for athletes. Okay. They, they can run further. Okay. Uh, but it also, you don't want extra blood vessels growing in your tumor. Right? Okay. Good point. So I think that with an abundance of caution, mm. anyone who has a, a tumor, don't take these things. Okay. But it's not going to necessarily grow a tumor okay. if you don't have one already. Wonderful. Okay. So let's talk. Uh, by the way, thank you. Um, I, I, are you having as much fun doing this as I am? Because yeah. you know all this stuff already. Well, uh, this is one of the best interviews I've done because we're getting you. into all sorts of things that I usually don't get asked about. Wonderful. Let's talk about aging for a second. So as we're measuring aging, I've heard, I've read some things, that, so understanding what's happening. Could you explain to us, is it, the, is it the cell's inability to now read the DNA like it used to? Or what's happening that's causing this to happen in our body and is what I just said completely ridiculous. No, it's correct. Good. We're, we're done. <laughs> we're done here. Ed's gonna do the rest of the interview by himself. No, it's serious. Seriously, okay. you, you summed it up probably better than I could, okay. which is uh, the analogy I use is, is a DVD, these old things you used to put movies on. Okay. Kid, any kids watching or listening, mm. this is, these are old things you used to put uh, mm. digital information on, but they're a good analogy because you can actually scratch them. Okay. Right? And so a DVD is the digital information and our genome, our DNA is digital. Instead of zeros and ones, it's ATCG chemicals. That information is actually very robust. You can get it out of an old person, it's intact mostly. You can get it out of a fossil. It lasts for thousands, if not millions of years. That's, that's the cool thing about digital information. Okay. It lasts. There's another type of information that controls the reading of those genes. Yeah. We call that not the genetic, but the epigenetic information. Mm -hmm. And epigenetic basically says, um, how is the DNA organized so a cell reads the right genes at the right time? Mm -hmm. And we don't know as much about it because it's much harder to read the epigenome than the genome. Okay. The reason is the epigenome is not digital information. It's, it's actually analog. Mm -hmm. It sucks. I, anyone mm -hmm. who's had a cassette tape or a, you know, a phonograph or a record player sure. um, is actually experiencing the problems with analog information. Okay. There's generations of, of people now that don't, have never experienced analog in their lives. Mm. But trust me, analog sucks. And our bodies, yeah. half of the information in our bodies is analog. Okay. And that's the problem. That's why we age. Okay. Because the analog, we have an analog system that reads the DNA. Mm. And over time, it doesn't read the right genes at the right time anymore. Yeah. Okay. And cells, when they don't read the right genes, they don't function well. Mm. So our blood glucose goes up, we get weak, we get diseases, mm. that's aging. But also what happens is that the, the cells forget what type of cells they are. Yeah. They despecialize. We call it X differentiation. Mm. Essentially, we become a melange, a collection of cells that for, have forgotten what kind of cells they should be. Got you. And that is pretty bad news, right? Yes. If you scratch a DVD, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. We've been looking for the polish on that DVD, and I think we found it. Okay, and it is? Well, we call it reprogramming, okay. genetic or epigenetic reprogramming. And it's a set of genes that we can put into cells or into the eye of a mouse yeah. and reset the age of that animal. Remember that clock that we're, we're yes. gonna measure on you? Yes. We call that the epigenetic clock for a good reason because okay. it's, it's actually the analog changes in the cell. Right? Okay. But here's what we can do. We can actually tell the cell now that you're old and you're not reading the right genes, go back and f read the genes the way you should. Okay. It's essentially polishing the DVD. Another way to think of it is we're rebooting the cell. Yes. We've got corrupted software. Screw that. Mm -hmm. Let's restart the, 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 the whole computer. Okay. And you're young again. Okay. Right? Erase the hard drive, start again. Wow. But we didn't know that was possible until wow. a year ago. Wow. Wow. That's what's in the book. I was writing the book as we made these discoveries. Wow. Wow. Imagine that, there's, a, there's a, a memory of being young in our, all of our bodies that we just have to tell, reset. Oh my gosh. And so, there, you're, do you mind naming the company that you're involved with that I was reading about that had something to do with the retina, or you're, doing it, you're working on it specifically with eyes, is that not right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So it's still in stealth mode. Yeah. 
This is incredible. But I'll, I'll reveal it okay. to all your listeners Thank for you. the first time. Uh, it's called I, I Do Know, and it's interesting. The first part of it is I, because we're going to treat glaucoma. Oh my gosh, this is huge. Yeah. And then I Do Know is also the Norse goddess of longevity. <laughs> but here's, here's what we want to do. And I'm an entrepreneur just like you, because I believe not just in making discoveries, but making them practical for people. Mm -hmm. I do know is planning and working towards uh, treating the loss of vision in, in people. This is unbelievable. But if we can reverse aging in the eye, what, what can't we reverse aging in? So it's early days, but what we've just discovered, and we have a scientific paper, if you Google uh, my name, you'll find it. Okay. We were able to reprogram the retina of an old mouse that couldn't see very well anymore, to be young again. So the nerves in the back of the eye, they became young, and they com these mice completely got their vision back. This is unbelievable. This is one of the, this may, this may be one of the, the most exciting things that we're on the brink of, that you're at the forefront of on the planet right now. I, and the reason it's important to me, A, it's funny, as I've aged, I had perfect vision, you know, as a baseball player, I'm, I mean, unreal vision. I could read a street sign from miles away, people, well, I don't know if it's miles away, but far away, and people would say, how do you see like this? And now I'm finding I can't read the street sign from 30 feet away. The, this area where I'm most aware of my aging is in my ability to see. And I have a sister, I haven't told you this, who is um, um, uh, juvenile diabetes, born without a oh, pancreas yeah. that functioned. And she's gotten to the point where essentially in long stages of her life, she's been completely blind and now sees just to some extent. And so do you think that there's even properties eventually with people with... Um, I mean, massive retina deterioration, you believe is going to be something well, that could the, be reversible at some point. So I, I don't want to overpromise because sure. it's just a year old and we, we're mm -hmm. making discoveries pretty fast, but it's still in, in animals. Mm -hmm. But, but let's, let's just right. suspend sure. all sorts of uh, disbelief right now and talk about what's possible. possible. So what I can tell you is the reason that you and I are losing our vision, the reason we have to do this mm -hmm. at night, is because the, the nerves in the back of our eye are not youthful anymore and they're forgetting that they're nerves. Right, as right? we said earlier, yes. And if, if I reprogram your eye just with an injection, mm -hmm. what I think would happen is that you'd get, those nerves would say, oh shit, I gotta, I gotta yep. work well yes. again. That I think we can, we can do. Our nerves in our eye are no different than a mouse's eye, really. Okay. But we did another experiment. We crushed the back of the optic nerve. We really, yeah. like you crush your spine, it's not gonna grow back right. unless you're a baby. Mm -hmm. We reversed the age of those nerves so much that they actually started growing back to the brain even after we killed them. Oh my or we gosh. we crushed them. That's, an, oh my gosh. So, that, that so if you can happened. do that in an eye, as you said, where else could that eventually be applicable in the body is un, you guys, unbelievable. Now we're not talking a decade. Now we're talking, I mean, we could potentially talking people living extremely long lifespans. What's doxycycline? Doxycycline is an antibiotic that you take for Lyme disease and some other infections. It's pretty common. But what's the application here? Well, so we engineered our, our treatment so yes. that we put new, the genes in the eye. Yes. And then we give the mice doxycycline for three weeks. Okay. And that turns on the genes. Okay. They get their vision back. Then we turn it off again by taking away the antibiotic. Got it. So here's, here's a, a fut future scenario. Wow. We can put those genes into our whole body. And as we get older, or God forbid, we, we break our back yes. or we, we injure ourselves yep. and we're not going to survive, we get an IV of doxycycline mm -hmm. or we take a pill mm -hmm. and we become like Deadpool and we can regrow things like an axolotl would chop their limb off and yes. they grow again. Oh my God. And then we stop taking the antibiotic, we're young, and then we can wait another few decades. Right, do it again. Right. So here's the cool thing. And I, I'm going to mention this in my social media because we don't know the answer yet, but I'll keep you updated. I'll give you a call. We don't we'll know. We'll be back on. We don't. Right. I, I'll be love. I'd love to come back on. We don't know how many times you can press the reset button and restore the hard drive. It could be once. We've done that. Maybe it's a hundred times. Oh my gosh. I I uh, I'm I'm such a uh, uh, I'm a I'm not a skeptic. I think sometimes my mind goes to what's the problem with that, and I yeah. think about. Is there even enough food in the world if people are living two and three and four hundred years long? Have you thought through some of those issues? That's something you don't even think about. No, I think about it all the time. You do? Yeah, because it's the planet and humanity that I Water care about. Water and food, right? There's only a, there's a finite amount of that, at least right now. Well, so I talk about this in my, in my book also because mm. we can't just solve aging and make people live a decade or more longer without mm. tackling the other problems we have. Mm -hmm. But what I've done is calc the calculations and the rationale comes out that 
this is the best thing we can do for the planet. Now it sounds crazy, right? That mm -hmm. if we have people living longer, how's that gonna help? Well, first of all, it's, it doesn't raise the, the population that much. In fact, yeah. most countries are leveling off anyway. Okay. okay, even if we stopped aging today, the rate of population growth isn't that much. Yeah. There aren't that many old people that are dying, actually. It's, uh, it's actually less than the rate of immigration right now. Hmm. Yeah. And there are a lot of countries that need help. Japan is losing its population, Europe as well. So there's that. But talk about consumption. We throw away half our food in this country. We've got to fix that first. Sure. Right? But the biggest thing, the big takeaway message is, if we can keep people healthier for longer and just have them die in a matter of months at the end, which is what happens if you live to 100. I understand now. Okay, yeah. I get it. So people, centenarians, we call them, people who make it over 100, they die quickly, I usually have a heart attack or a kidney mm. failure. They cost at least one third less than the rest of us. I get it. Let's I get us all there. I just got it. Yeah, okay. that's trillions of dollars saving. We already waste a lot of money on healthcare, yeah. keeping people alive for 10 years in nursing homes. Mm. I think we all have a duty to keep ourselves healthy for longer, if mm. not for ourselves, but for our children and our grandkids who have to take care of us mm. for 10 years. This is a revolutionary conversation for me. It's a paradigm shifting conversation for me because some of the things we've discussed today, everyone, I want to go back. You have to get this book. You have to get this book. You have to be following this man on social media and you're going to want to get the next one. This is someone that if you want to live better, longer, healthier, you want to stay close to this man because obviously he's going to live for a whole long time and he's at the cutting edge of all of these things we've talked about. I want people to dream for a minute, then I'm gonna go for a question about, I don't have a lot of money and I wanna to begin to live longer, but I wanna to go to one more thing, just because I want people to understand some of the possibilities out there. Talk to them about CRISPR just a little bit, because this is, combined with what you just described, yeah. something that is, you, you begin to think through all of the technological advances in the world, but in terms of, in terms of this space, we may be entering the, if we want to call it the internet age of anti-aging right now. We may be sitting on our, the Apples and the Microsoft concepts, the Googles of anti-aging right now in some of these spaces. And, and these will change people's lives. So tell them about CRISPR just for a second. Yeah, right. So, so we've gone through what we can do today in our daily lives. Right. And there's cutting edge technology that, that I talk about in my book, and we just talked mm -hmm. about that's coming very soon. Yes. And there's medicines already that you can possibly take. But the future looks incredible. I've already said that even if we don't have these breakthroughs, mm -hmm. every four years we get to live longer, we get another year of life. That's, mm. that's great. But what's coming makes my head spin. And I, I've been at the cutting edge of, of genetics for the last you know, 30 years. And I just can't believe, every morning I wake up so cool. and I pinch myself that we're living in the future already. Mm. But what's coming blows my mind. So in my department at Harvard Medical School, I get to work with people who grow eyes in a dish and people who work on uh, all sorts of futuristic stuff, growing brains in a dish. George Church is one of my good friends and colleagues. He's just, my lab's just on the, the different floor than his in the same building. So he's one of the guys that, uh, women as well, there, mm -hmm. were, there were a team of people that showed that you could actually edit the human genome. This is huge. So we can now read the genome. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of a billion dollars to read your genome, I can do it in my lab for a, a device, with a device that big. Right now. For a hundred bucks. Right. I can do that today. Yes. And soon it'll be in a few hours for mm. less than the cost of a needle. Crazy. That's the crazy stuff. But it gets even crazier when we can actually change the genome. We don't just read it, we write it. Right. And we can change genes, we can put new genes in very easily. There are drugs on the market, most people may not realize, you may not realize that we can now, the FDA approved drugs, we are changing people's genetic disease, we're curing genetic diseases. Yes. Yes. We are living in the future, man. That's crazy. But the future, be, for us is gonna be even crazier because we are just on the cost of hundreds of companies working on CRISPR yeah. and gene therapy. Mm. And this is the hottest thing in biotech right now. I mean, imagine everybody, the ability to interrupt the fact that you have a predisposition to heart disease right. or a form of cancer and interrupt that. How about this? Maybe this is nuts. Could we potentially interrupt somebody's and make them smarter? Could you change someone's intelligence through altering the, their genome? Could you do that? Well, or? theoretically, there's a lot of genes involved in intelligence okay. and the brain has to be wired from an early age. Okay. Uh, but we know that drugs are capable of making you more intelligent or at least give you more creativity. So we're, we, we could do that theoretically. But one of the things I'm excited about is being able to alter our bodies in ways that make us resistant to certain diseases, okay. heart disease, HIV. Now, we can get to that. that yeah, go ahead. There are two kids on this planet that were genetically modified to be resistant to HIV. Mm. That's craziness. Now. 
crazy to think about. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a whole debate. We, we in the world should start debating whether we want to not just help ourselves, sure. but the do we want to make our kids resistant to heart disease, mm -hmm. to cancer? We know how to do this. Mm. If you said, David, could I make my kids resi resistant to cancer? Mm. That's easy. I could do that in my lab. One of my students could do it. It's not difficult. We know that there are species that live a lot longer than us. They have certain gene variants. Mm. They have special types of these longevity genes. Mm. Whales can live 200 years. Mm. We know pretty much what they're doing. They're stabilizing their epigenome. Their DVDs aren't, don't get scratched as much. So whales can live 200 years. Mm. So it's possible. Mm. We know some of the genes that are involved. We could give ourselves that, or we could give our children that. Why would we not? What are the negative implications of something like that? Uh, well, we just want to make sure it's safe. I M think that's Meaning, the main what one. else is it doing? Is that what you mean? Right. You could make them intelligent, but they might then get cancer the next week. I got week. you. So sen uh, I want to make sure I pronounce it right. Senolinux. Am I saying that correctly? Senolytics? Yes. Yeah. What is it? Well, they're exciting too. Okay. So that's also been a breakthrough. So as I mentioned that before we figured out how to reprogram the body, the best technology and understanding we had were these hallmarks of aging. There were about eight yes. of these. And I mentioned some of them. Yep. One of the main ones is, is senescent cells which accumulate. Right. Okay. Right. So when you get a really bad scratch DVD, mm -hmm. when your cells forget what type of cell they are, they can kill themselves. But if they don't kill themselves, they become senescent. So what's senescent? They actually, instead of dying, they just sit there like zombies. Yes. And that'd be fine, except they start to secrete these factors that cause other cells that are healthy to grow old and defective. Inflammation is a big problem. Yeah. And we think that senescent cells are causing this problem. Yeah. So senolytics is just a word for drugs that will kill off those cells when they're not dying themselves. Got it. And in mice, if you do that, they get rejuvenated. Okay. And they get younger. Okay. I'm a, I'm a I'm thinking through someone listening to this because my the typical person in my audience, I think works out to look better, or eats to look better, and I think the next level of consciousness, particularly, unfortunately, I found that anti-aging has almost become um, an a space and an area where people with some affluence have been thinking about more than people that are just trying to get through life and improve their stock in life. And I don't like that part of it. Yeah. And so I know there are people listening to this going, this sounds good, I can't afford to get metformin. I, uh, I'm probably not gonna take growth hormone and I'm not sure that I should anyway. Resveratrol is relatively affordable for most people. You could probably get your hands on that potentially. But if you were to give me two or three, four basic things I could do to begin to reverse the aging process for me, would it be the caloric re restriction? Would it be uh, carbohydrates, yeah. what would those few things be if I'm not able to get myself a couple of these medications that I should be putting in my body right away? Yeah. Well, so I absolutely agree with you that we can okay. talk about gene therapy for mm. tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, which is great if you're losing your vision, by the way, but, mm. but these are not available to everybody. Right. And I just got back from Africa a few months ago and you know, believe me, there are people in this world that don't care about anti-aging. Sure. We also don't call it anti-aging where I come from because anti-aging is a whole group of people who are working on other things. So we call it longevity research. But what, if there was one thing you asked me that I could give advice, or maybe a few things. Mm -hmm. The first would be eat less often. There are studies that have been done with my colleagues at the National Institute of Health. They gave mice, who have very similar metabolisms to us, uh, very different um, diets. They wanted to know, is it better to eat more meat or to eat more carbohydrate or more fat? Okay. Big debate. Mm. And the result blew me away. He found that it wasn't better to eat more meat. He found it wasn't better to eat more fat. And it wasn't better to eat, better to eat more carbohydrate. Okay. It wasn't what you ate. All those mice lived a normal lifespan. How much you ate. But How the often? ones that ate it in a small time of day, two hours a day, lived 20% longer. Wow. So here's wow. the take home message. Wow. If that's right, it's not so much what you eat, it's when you eat that's important. Okay. And so I've gone on a diet where I restrict when I eat. I try not to eat breakfast, try not to eat lunch. That has made me feel a lot, lot better, I'm sharper, hmm. and I think that I'm gonna live longer because of that. Okay. So that's, that's step one. Okay. And in fact, that saves money. Sure, sure right? does, right. Right, um, and don't overindulge in anything. Don't just eat all meat, in my view. Don't eat all fat. Okay. You wanna mix it up, trick your body. Oh, I'm running out of this, I'm running out of that. And even with uh, resveratrol, don't have to take it every day. Take it every other day, tricks okay. your body. Uh, another thing that's cheap, uh, get off your ass. Okay. Um, I typed a book, and I, I'm, I think I aged a lot writing this book, actually. 
but it was worth it. <laughs> but if you don't get your body into a state of breathlessness or get your muscles to be tired and sore, your body will say, hey, everything's good. I don't need to fight diseases. I don't need to fight aging. Okay. okay. So you lose your breath at least a few times a week if you can. Okay. Get on a treadmill. I think 40 minutes is great. 10 minutes is good. Mm -hmm. But anything is better than nothing. Okay. Um, what else is good? So what I do when I go to the gym on Sunday with my son. You go once a week. Well, I try to go more. Okay. And I'm on planes a lot. Yeah. Um, but I have a home gym, so I try to do okay. it. But I, 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 don't, I don't live a perfect life. Mm -hmm. um, it's maybe why I take extra molecules to try and supplement <laughs> that. Offset it. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, but Can I, I, tell know, you I finish thing? work about midnight, so it's Yeah, you're, you're, you're in that mega achiever, multiple companies, your lab, all the work you do, children. You're at that point where, yeah, sometimes your fitness and your nutrition may take a back seat, right? right? Which is... Probably not healthy. One thing you didn't mention that I'm surprised, and I've not heard you talk about this. What about being happier? Yeah. So, and I know that's not part of the research necessarily, or maybe it is, but do happy people live longer? They do. Okay. They always do. Okay, so how come that's not part of what's talked about? Or is it just so anecdotal or silly that it's not discussed? But, yeah. but I would think happier people have less stress in their body, probably less inflammation in their body, just by not having well, that, that kind of stress. It's true. It's true. But... One of the reasons we don't talk about it is that we don't understand why it works. Okay. But it, but because as a fact. scientist, you have to be able to prove why it works. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's why people didn't regard aging as a disease, which I do. We didn't understand why aging happened, so we said, oh, okay. it's natural, let's not deal with that. But now, like cancer, we understand, we think how it works. Hmm. You can focus on that. Now it's, now it's okay to say it's a problem. Happiness, wishy-washy. Okay. But all of the, cent the centenarians, the people that live to 100, they're always happy that's people. That's right. 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 Mind you, if I lived to 100, I'd be pretty happy too. <laughs> right. No, there's a good no, point. But they've been happy their whole life. Yes. And that that's definitely works. But I haven't been happy my whole life. Mm -hmm. I'm a lot happier now that I'm 50 because I've learned what a bad day is. And most days are not bad days, yeah. even if you think they're bad. Mm. Uh, but yeah, early in my life, I, w I was quite depressed, actually. We talked a little bit that off camera. So let's just go there for a few seconds. I've told you that the thing that surprised me the most, and I just think it should, here's somebody who's you know, arguably the best person in the world in their field is doing work that has tremendous meaning. I mean, you, I don't know that you could do work with that has more meaning to mankind than what you're doing right now outside of spiritual work. Um, yet, you're not always happy. You haven't always been happy in your life. And I think it's important that people know that because I've told people that, you know, on my show, the thing that surprised me the most, all these mega achievers, what do they all have in common? Some of it's work ethic, some of it's good fortune, some of it's intellect, but they don't all have those things. The vast majority struggle with, to some extent with a little bit of their yeah. mental health. Do you still, to some, when I met you, when we just embraced when you first got here, I thought you had an ease and a, um, honestly, like an elegance about your personality. This is somebody very comfortable with themselves. But, I, but as I've started to watch you more, I wonder if this, there's this dude in there that's a little bit of battle with himself that's wondering if he's not moving this at the speed that he should, if his work is not where he would like it to be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm a perfectionist and an overachiever. Mm. Um, I want to leave the world way better than I found it, at least some, somewhat better. And I, I find myself in a position of great responsibility. Now mm. I'm at Harvard and mm. I've got this research. So I'm maximizing my day yeah. without sacrificing my family as best I can. Mm. But early in my career, because I set such a high goal from an early age, mm. ever since I was four, I wanted to understand why we age and wake the world up. Why aren't we worried about this? This is not yeah. good. We treat cancer, we treat heart disease, we treat frailty, we treat Alzheimer's. Mm. But you know what causes all of those things? Aging, why don't Aging. we care? Mm. Uh, and so I've always set that goal. And uh, there were stages in my life where I thought I wasn't gonna achieve anything. Mm. I saw that I was stuck in, I was, thought I was stuck in Australia. Mm. I just finished a PhD. There were no jobs for PhDs. Mm. Uh, who were studying the sex life, life of a yeast cell. That's what I trained in. <laughs> That's awesome. And I thought, what have I done? I've worked <laughs> myself into such specialization, I'm not going to change the world. I might make some yeast happier, but that's about it. Yeah. And being inconsequential is, the, is worse than death for me. I, I want to wake up every day feeling as though I'm going to make a difference. Being inconsequential is worse than death for you. Yeah. You know what occurred to me as you were saying it? You know, one of the obligations, responsibilities we all have is to create a life that we want to live longer for. 
Right. And so for the vast majority of you listening to this, you know, one of the things that is so important about all the things you listen to on my show and particularly today is, how about we start creating a life that we can't wait to be around for longer in anticipation of? One of the things that makes me so excited about today's show, look, I do a lot of shows. I've been so looking forward, by the way, and it's exceeding my expectations, is because I've been in anticipation about the work you do. And I, I wanna ask you about that from a business perspective, because we don't have that much more time, but there's a lot of entrepreneurs that listen to this. Yeah. So this is something I know you've not been asked, but he, this is also a serial entrepreneur, multiple businesses, a couple I'm gonna make, him, make me get involved with. But um, if you were an entrepreneur, knowing that this, see, if someone could have knocked on my door in 1985 and said, hey, the internet's coming, maybe you ought to start thinking about that as a businessman. This thing's coming, this wave's coming. Start to think strategically about businesses, products, services, methods of delivery that could help there. I feel like what we're describing, this, this um, longevity industry, we'll call it that, is the next big wave. And if I were an entrepreneur listening to this, I'd be thinking, how do I prepare myself? What should I be thinking? What should I be looking at? So I know it's a difficult question, yeah. but what advice would you give to an entrepreneur who's hearing these things from you and all the possibilities that come along with it? What should they be thinking or doing? Yeah. Well, so the world has changed a lot in the last few years. I was mm. the first young guy to start companies on longevity. Mm -hmm. And I, I, if people are wondering, I, it's all on my website. I started. Mm -hmm more than 15 companies, mm -hmm. I help, I've helped dozens, and I've taken four public. Awesome. Um, I reinvest all that money, by the way, in mm. startups and jobs and mm. philanthropy. So awesome. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make money, I'm trying mm. to leave, it, leave the Live world like better. So. But if someone could have instructed me when I was young, what I would have said to them is, identify a trend, and if you don't have the money to invest, get involved in startups, but, but work with the best people. Mm. Don't work with mediocre people. Because mm -hmm. the best, things are gonna get really hard when you start up a company. Mm. Things are gonna fail, you may be near bankruptcy, mm. and you wanna be with people that you can trust. Mm. So I don't work with assholes anymore. <laughs> Done with that. <laughs> that's awesome. Really, that, that's yep. the first criterion. And uh, you know, my friends are all like family to me and vice versa. So that's actually mm. one of the best bits about getting older is you, you have this group of people you can trust. Mm. But from the outset, I wish that I had always worked with the best of the best. Mm. So look for that. If you have a little bit of money, you can invest in something like this. Some mm. of these companies are just getting started mm. and the field is exploding. Yes. So I agree with you that longevity research is gonna make the iPhone look like old news. I do too. And I love what you said about trends and finding the best people. Those are two huge keys. If you're an entrepreneur thinking about this, you should be thinking about what are the trends? How does it impact the business you're in currently? Right? What are the changes gonna be there? Okay, I have one last question for you um, because I'm just fascinated to know this. Are you, doing, are you afraid to die? No. You're not? That's an easy question. In fact, it, I used to be afraid to die when I was in my 20s and 30s because I wanted to see where things would go. Yeah. And there's this natural fear in all of us. Mm -hmm. But I now know that I'm not afraid because I, I fly a lot and a few times those planes were going down and I, I had felt that I was going to die. Hmm. It was going to be sad that I'd miss my family. My family would have to do without me. But personally, I'm not worried about that. My wife is the opposite. She grabs under my arm yeah. and she's I'm going to die. And I said, if we die, we die. She, I don't want to die. And hmm. I'm just like, as long as it's not too painful, I'm good with it. Hmm. So letting go of the fear of death was one of the best things I ever did in my hmm. life. Because hmm. now I can live without fear. You got it. That's the key. That's why I ask you, David. I really believe that letting go of the fear of dying allows you to live freely now, allows you to embrace it. And I, I gotta tell you, like, I'm more excited about life and where it's going and what the possibilities are because someone like you exists in the world. I'm like, I really admire you. And um, I'm glad we've become friends. You're gonna stick very close to me, just so you know, because I wanna live a long time. <laughs> But because I, I, I'm not afraid to die, but I am excited to see what happens while I live. And I'd like to do it as long as I can. Yeah, well, we're going to be friends because you're an inspiration. You, you do all the right things with your life. And, Thank you. And your I don't do all the right business. things, but I, I know what you mean. I know, I know exactly. I'm trying to do as good in the world. And I think we both have a lot in common that we want to make a difference in other people's lives and make a difference in the world. Yeah. And that line you said, that's gonna, I'm going to reflect on that tonight about living a life of, of, of an inconsequential life is worse than death. Well, the reason I follow you is that I have bad days. Mm -hmm. I need inspiration. Mm -hmm. It's not all easy. Mm -hmm. and, and guys like you, we, we get inspiration from you and you, you lift us up. Thank you, brother. Man, I, I'm so glad I met you. Let's do one more time. I wanna make sure they know where to follow you. I don't know if I've ever had an interview where I've felt more optimistic and learned more. 
I certainly learned the most today, that's for sure. But where do they find you? Where do you want them to go find you? you want them to see you on Instagram or where should they go? Well, yeah, I'm on all social media. Okay, and where uh, do they find you? What are you under? We'll put it on the screen on YouTube. But yeah, sure. We have a website called lifespanbook.com. Okay. You can sign up for a newsletter. They also tweet a lot, uh, David A. Sinclair. And Instagram is David Sinclair PhD. Okay, wonderful. David, thank you so much today. I enjoyed this so much. I know you guys did in the audience as well. You got to share this. You got to share this. People need to know this information. Give them optimism, give them hope, and give them the strategies to live longer and live better right now. Thank you, Dr. David Sinclair. Everybody, you know that every day to engage with me, follow me on Instagram. We run the max out two minute drill every single day, which means when I make a post, which is 7.30 Pacific, 10.30 Eastern, Monday through Friday, first two to five minutes, make a comment, especially on this video, make a comment and you're in a drawing every single day. The other way that you can get in the drawing is to make a comment on people's comments. And if you miss the first five minutes, just make a comment every day on every post. We add up all those people and pick winners as well. You can ride on my jet. You get to meet some of my guests. You get Max Out gear. Come to see me speak live. All kinds of cool things happen. So get involved with the Max Out community on Instagram on the Max Out 2 Minute Drill. God bless you and continue to max out. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around. If you'd like more, click the videos right here. They're exactly what you need to see next. And if you're new here, hit subscribe and become a part of the Max Out community. And tell me what you think about the videos in the comments below. I read all of them every week and I select winners that get all kinds of prizes, gear, coaching calls with me. Make a comment.